Hi, I'm Alec from easierhabits.com and I coach entrepreneurs on how to harness the power of good habits to grow successful and meaningful businesses. I've been wanting to talk about market research for a while, but instead of just talking at you, right, or telling you the principles, I actually show you the details of how to do market research. So if this is something you've been banging your head repeatedly against because it is big and ambiguous and all the blogs are like, go find people, listen to them, talk to them, and it's just ambiguous, vague, unhelpful advice. Well, in this video, you're gonna get the specifics, how to start finding keywords that might be helpful for you, going through social media accounts and blogs and products and product reviews and finding questions about the products online, what people need, what they're looking for, what they like, what's not working for them, finding influential people, even conferences, actually I dived in. Um, and this is heavily based and inspired by Pat Flynn's Will It Fly book. So I wanna give him credit and make sure there's a link below. I'm not an affiliate or anything. It just was the first time that I went through a section on market research and it was actually very specific and clear, like step by step, do this and that. Now, the downside of that is the book came out seven years ago and so the market research is a little bit older. For example, he has a section on forums, but forums have pretty much been swallowed up by like Reddit and Quora and these days. So um, you can still kind of, do the spirit of that market research, but you need to update that a little. And that's what I've done with my marketing process, uh, my market research process. You can also see specifically how my market research process evolves, right? I might start with a particular set of tabs, but then as I have different ideas or see uh, different opportunities, I might add tabs or organize them differently to uh, capture all of this data. So this is a flexible process. You can adapt it to your own. You don't have to just follow me right now, but man, it is a night and day difference doing market research when you have a specific plan. And I even, I even go into that with, with um, the market research, how having a specific plan and having tabs helps me focus and pull away from distraction. Cause like one of your number one challenges in market research will be being distracted as you're like scrolling down social media accounts or YouTube or other things, or you're on Amazon, whatnot. Um, <laughs> It's really easy to get distracted. So having a plan like the one I'm going to show you is going to help you, one, take an overwhelming task that you don't know how to start and do it, and then stay focused on what matters while you do it. And you can even see an example of me starting to get distracted and then coming back. So um, this is an exciting episode. It is long, but it is worth it. Please stay with me for the ride. But just in case, I will say up front, if this type of content is helpful, please like and subscribe. It will help other entrepreneurs uh, muscle through the potentially difficult challenge of market research and find the information they need to grow successful and meaningful businesses. So with no further ado, let's launch into my market research process. So where I start my market research is with a spreadsheet where I can capture ideas. The most important part of this spreadsheet is just loose organizations for different types of information that you might find. For example, products in this space, uh, social network links, and those social uh, will be different ones. Usually what I mean by social is groups, but it could be an individual Twitter account or a group on Facebook or LinkedIn, could be an Instagram or Pinterest account. Really, the social that you look at will depend on your market and your space. Um, in some ways, I, actually linking to Discord communities for VR 3D modeling might not be a bad idea um, because that might be a great place where people are actively talking about various products. Uh, and I guarantee you that the products do have some Discord communities in the space. I would definitely put YouTube as a great place to check for influencers. I mean, you could put it on social, but it is kind of a different beast. Long form video content is is going to be, for, for me, I feel like that's just a separate category. Although as you adapt this to your own needs, you can remove or add tabs as you want. There's forums. Again, uh, this does come from Pat Flynn's Will It Fly, and back in the day, I think there were more like forums, but since Reddit and Quora have a huge monopoly on question asking communities, those are pretty much the main forums that I look, uh, look for. Usually as kind of an afterthought, I will go ahead and 
um, you know, look up and, and on the web, specifically other independent forums that exist. It's just been my experience that a lot of them are defunct now because they've basically been replaced uh, by sites that actually um, have easier management tools. So uh, blogs is another place where that could be very influential blogs or other websites where you can find um, where you can find, you know, influencers and information. There are places you could potentially partner with to do articles to get the word out about what you're doing, what your product doing. So it's it's still a very good, relevant place to go. And people, um, it may be that you capture a lot of the people that you're interested in via social or YouTube. Uh, may or may not be the case. I kind of keep that in just in case. Uh, it helps me think not just in terms of you know, a a site to go and to consume information with, but maybe it's people I want to network with later or collaborate with. And also some people will be brilliant in your space, but won't have as much of a social presence. So that might be someone who's, you know, a, in this space, for example, a really good technician, like a, a coder of 3D apps, right? Who would have a lot to say potentially about the apps that exist, what it takes to code in that, et cetera. Um, but they may or may not be a public figure, so there might be people I wanna reach out to. So those are, again, some loose tabs. You can play around with this. What I am going to do in this market research example is not exhaustively research each of my keywords. What I will do is I will go through a few examples with one keyword, and I think you'll be able to get the idea and um, and, and kind of extrapolate be able to f start filling in your ideas. If you're lost at the keyword phrase, like I've already kind of been looking into this. I've, I've, I've held off, I, I, so I honestly haven't done my official market research because I wanted to do this with you guys, but, um, but I already did have some idea of kind of some topics that I would, <laughs> and keyword phrases that I might look into. Uh, but if you're really at a loss, I would just go to Google, you know, and if there's uh, a random projects, I would say like, VR sculpting and um, you know he, there's here's these sites you can look at the language they use but actually what's really helpful is like all right VR sculpting uh, blender that's a product uh, sculpting oculus sculpting free uh, programs Adobe medium so so this is recommending basically products <laughs> and that actually makes me wonder a little bit if some of these might be influenced by um relationships that google has or like ad related stuff uh i'm not 100 percent sure uh but in, in in other cases that i've searched is less product related it might also be because it's a small space and people don't search generally for vr sculpting um let's try vr 3d modeling all right the the word that i'm actually going to use so uh, modeling software modeling free uh, for 3D printing. All right, so that is something that I'm like, okay, there's a use case, a business use case potentially that I could look into, right? Uh, none of my businesses involve 3D printing, but that might be an opportunity because that's a common search. Uh, you can actually see up in the search bar, I do have a, um, I think it's like SEO, uh, yeah, Surfer, SEO Surfer or something like that, which tells me how many searches per month I think they get in the US. 480 is not a lot. And then also cost per click for AdWords. So like how competitive, how how many people are, are what people are paying for, for the ads that show up here. I don't even like see ads. Wait, are these, are there ads? Anyway, um, but that's that's a helpful tool. The, the SEO surfer gives you an idea of like search volume. And especially when you get into doing keyword research, you're gonna want tools like that later. Um, so if I click through, for instance, 3D modeling, in VR for 3D printing. Let's see. All right, zero. So like, this is a pretty small keyword. Maybe I stick with VR 3D modeling, but that's just an example of coming down here to the related searches to get keyword ideas if you're kind of stuck or you don't know the right language at first. And um, Google's a, a good place to go, but you can kind of do that on almost any search platform. You could check out their auto suggest. You could see what questions people are asking on Reddit and Quora and how they phrase things. So um, in any case, uh, that's 
loosely coming up with keywords. So in this space, there are definitely, depending on the market, you could do these in a different order, but I've noticed from my experience already that the keywords um, that a lot of people search by are individual products. So uh, one of the places to go for individual products, so it would be an app store, right? If you're looking for apps, like I'm going to be with Google, um, with uh, Oculus Quest. And then Amazon, of course, uh, another big place to find products. You can, uh, when you are Google searching, right, you might find, um, see, there's these are some related searches, but they're also like prod, uh, products, right? Tilt brush, gravity sketch, et cetera. Um, sometimes also you see a carousel up here with ads and sellers. Those are also products, so. In that case, anyway, for, for products, I'm gonna go to the, here, let me back this up a little bit. I did click through just to make sure that I get the information that I wanted. Um, so I'm gonna go to apps, I'm not interested in games, and I'm gonna search VR 3D modeling. Do, 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 do. All right, so Echo VR Among Us, I'm not sure, like the the quest search algorithm, I think probably because it's dealing with fewer apps and they want to make it look like the app store is really full. A lot of these are, you know, not quite that relevant. Like Firefox is a browser. It's not a 3D modeling software like baseball. OK, but. Um, there are some here like Gravity Sketch, for example, if I can click through to that. So I might, uh, that's a long link, but what I might do is, right, type in Gravity Sketch. Uh, reviews, actually I should do notes as well. Um, I try and have that in each of my sections so I can write uh, a little bit of of uh, information to remember for the future, since when you're just looking at a list of links, it can get very overwhelming and you can forget which one is which. And then we're just gonna format that to clip. All right, so uh, reviews is kind of a note section, right? But I might go through, let's take a look at, you know, what it says about itself. Preserve your design intent through the creative process. Communicate ideas in 3D at each stage. Capture work as an image or model to use in other phases of your workflow. Express 3D ideas in real time at any scale. Create loose, free form sketches, detailed models, expansive scenes, artwork, unrestricted. So they do say artwork, but there's a lot in here about like designing. And so, and if you look at this picture, right, uh, it could be 3D, I guess 3D concept art. Um, but it also looks like it might be uh, 3D products focused. So this is 3D modeling, uh, product design focused. Whereas, uh, for instance, my YouTube channel that I talked about would be environments. And if this is focused on more on like individual objects and concept art for indiv it's let's see, does it say? It does say expansive scenes. Uh, from my personal experience, I've seen that less than kind of like a character head or a shoe or things like that. And if you look actually, again, if you were to, to get into this and uh, dive deeper, right, try out each of these as part of your eventual product research, then um, you would find, for instance, they have models of like people and faces and things like that for like clothing designers and other people. So you can kind of get a sense by diving into them what their focus is. Um, but if I were just doing this quick first pa pass and I hadn't seen it before, I'd just say like, you know, 3D modeling, product design. And then if I was skeptical or whatever, like, yeah, they say, you know, s expansive scenes, uh, I might, you know, put a question mark on that one or whatever. Just like, is that really true? Do people really use it for expansive scenes? I could look up, you know, look for examples later on that. But the other thing that you really want to check out are the reviews. So especially if these are like competing products in your space. Let's see, many strengths, clean, elegant, but still too many shortcomings. If I draw a part of the vase, deletes the handle, a 
Uh, VR Children's app instead allows this more and more. Um, that's kind of a little bit difficult to, uh, there's a little bit difficult to get at what he's saying, but, you know, he's comparing it to children apps, so I think, you know, um, could be simpler, could be simpler, probably, you know, uh, could be another feature in there, or a specific feature he's asking for. Uh, so few sculptures to upload to the internet, and also they're not very beautiful. <laughs> I think those are examples. Um, anyway, a lot of what I look for in this, you can find like mesh, ner nerves, I don't even know what a nerve is, but it's a beautiful word. Subdivision. Um, I can model anything from chairs to tables to characters, plants, creatures, and rocks. So again, like individual objects is kind of what I'm getting again that's reconfirming some of the things that I thought. Uh, sadly, it is important to watch a few YouTube videos to figure this software out because it is on the complex side. So uh, here I could say like, it's complex all right um and so you could if i was going through this entire process which i won't make you sit through because i'm nice like that right <laughs> i'd read each of these i usually put a special focus and i think this actually comes out of pat flynn's book again is that you want to look at people who are like two to four or even two to three um because those are people who usually find some value in a thing but like, you know, fives are just the the people who are singing the praises and it might not be balanced. And one is is very often people who like hated it because one thing went horribly wrong with them or it's biased. But like two or three are the people who are potentially into this product, but are seeing things that they might still want. So I might pay, uh, pay special attention to this. In this case, this two, the cloud save is a fool's errand. I'm like so mad about this that I'm actually considering just selling my quest Right, he's selling his quest because one app did not work for him. This is actually, I'm surprised he gave it a two instead of a one. It reads a lot more like a one. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I might go forward and and uh, broke my Oculus. Again, like that's like, okay, something terrible happened um, that's out of the usual, but it doesn't really talk about the app that much, apparently. Like, obviously, if you create an app, if I were to create a VR sculpting app, I should try and design it not to break people's Oculuses, but um you know again that's kind of the the one star not helpful um all right so here's a three star it asks for too much personal info and is hard to set up every time i try and log in it asks me for an email so that's like login maybe people don't want to log in um have better onboarding your videos don't help the user understand your app it is hard it is hard to keep up with the video while trying out the app it would be really helpful if you could go through the steps as an experience of making an object, like point out on the controller itself, then point out the stuff in the menus, click and explain. So they're asking for like better tutorials. Complex needs better tutorials. Right. And you can get those on YouTube, but it's still good product feedback, like in what they're asking for is in product tutorial. Right. So that, that's an example of like notes I'm taking on the on the reviews and then, you know, just notes on the product itself, etc. I would go ahead back and do that for like tilt brush and other products, but and, and fill this out until I had several. Um, but I think that gives you the idea of what I'm looking for, what kind of questions I'm asking. Um, and again, the algorithm for doing this is pretty much the same whether you find the product, whether it's an app store or Amazon, right? Go to the product, kind of see see the product, especially look at the highest ranking ones, generally speaking, and and then look at uh, search for the reviews and you kind of sp pay special attention to the mid-range ones. Um, that usually I, I can find some fans who are number five fans who are like super fans in this space who are talking who talk about the products they love so i wouldn't completely disregard them but the ones do tend to be trash so um that said all right move on to social so i'm doing twitter um it's going to be different depending on different social groups and i will check that out um you know i'll check out uh facebook probably will have something linkedin maybe not so much in this space but as a coach linkedin has you know entrepreneur groups and other groups that are good for me to join um and so again just check out instagram whatever might be helpful but uh this this basic thing uh that you'd be looking for um so you typed in let's see let's type in v vr 3d modeling 
All right, so here's a bunch of accounts. All right, and you can kind of already see that I'm not just looking for tweets. Um, that might be helpful to search for sometimes, but right now you want to look at where to go and you want to find people who are like aggregating the best tweets for you, right? So you'd be looking at people or in other social networks, you might be looking at groups. And the other thing I might be looking at, so I'm looking at the description, do they actually fit with that? Um, and then I'm looking at how many followers, right? And I might initially, just to get a sense of this keyword, like how many followers, um, 800, for, you know, 500, 1,000, okay, 5,000, that's a little bit more. Building tomorrow today architecture is that specifically what I'm interested in 3d printing VR well So there's a lot of stuff. Maybe it's not just like architect, you know architect related. I could follow this um, Another thing though is again if you do a lot of market research on a lot of projects um, You might not want to follow everybody in the case of groups you often have to join the group but one thing that's nice about Twitter is you can just like click through and get their tweets and so if I capture this in my Twitter, uh, I'm just gonna, instead of group, I guess it's gonna be nocratis.fgm, whatever. I'm gonna say nocratis, I'll have the link anyway. Uh, that is, that is fun. Um, Twitter, and then, all right, the size, the followers is 4932. You know, that's, you know, someone who's been around, who's usually invested in things. Oh, yeah, you would also want to check that they're, they have recent tweets is the other thing that you want to check for. So, like, obviously, if they have pinned content, it might be older. Um, okay, this person's into NFTs. Uh, oh, the ape. Uh, board ape stuff. Do I want to follow this person? Um, <laughs> All right, I'm not necessarily in an NF NFTs. So the other thing is you can check and see if, um, um, you know, there is interesting content. If they are just like only NFTs, then maybe I don't actually want them. Forward space. Recently swapped pieces on super rare creative juices. All right. Anyway, um, mm, so all right. I don't know actually a hundred percent if this is someone I want to follow because uh, the focus architectural designer metaverse three D modeling. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm super interested in this person. They're not in this space that I want to be. They they have an account that's big enough. And generally speaking, I mean, uh, like uh, if you have 100,000 followers or millions of followers, like obviously that's someone big you might have in a space. Um, VR 3D modeling is pretty dang niche. So I have a feeling like 5,000 followers. Oh, followed by Gary. V oh, Gary Vaynerchuk. He is a known person, but again, he's more in marketing and NFT space, and he's not necessarily the person I want to be followed by, um, uh, followed, you know, following for VR. So anyway, um, going back, Spicy Polly's, all right, this person, okay, 83 only. That's such a nice logo, though. Um, 941. Yeah, a lot of them sub 1000, which are kind of smaller. Trilogy partners, leaders in virtual design, utilizing 3D modeling and, okay. This is a business, that's fine. If they're actually like producing relative tweet, uh, relevant tweets. 3D base camp, last day of 3D base camp. Still so many things to learn. So this is like a conference. That's good. I didn't know there was a conference called 3D base camp. That's the kind of thing I might want to learn. Um, do I care whether it snows? Not really, but people like those like to tweet those tweets, man. I wonder if you could, what I wish there were, were, um, like their top tweets. You'd sort their tweets by like top, their most popular. That'd be interesting. 
But they're, you can see other projects they like. So like SketchUp, 3D for creatives of all kinds. Wow, okay. So yeah, I guess this, that's another algorithm that we just ran into that actually I you know, hadn't really thought to discover, right? Uh, until now, I'm just like, I haven't tried clicking on the links before. Usually I just go to the tweaks to, uh, tweets to see if they have relevant stuff. Um, they haven't liked stuff in a while, but um, SketchUp, right, is a big channel, 3D for creatives of all kinds. Use SketchUp 3D to show us your stuff. Um, cool. All right, click through. Um, they have a pin treat from January. They, they're 17 hours ago. NFTs, okay, ag. Uh, 3D NFTs are a big thing, I, I guess, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. Um, skill Builder, we'll take a look. Okay, so they've got like teaching content on YouTube. So that might come around in YouTube channels again. Anyway, so cool. Uh, and they've got a lot of followers. So that's a big one. And so I'm going to actually replace just NFT boy with SketchUp because they have other content too. Make sure I actually captured that. <laughs> Boop. Yep. All right. Twitter and then followers. Um, one. I'll just round it up to 115K. And notes. Um, everybody. Like all, all, all of the 3D people are into NFTs. <laughs> NFTs. Ugh. Um. That is a note, not just them, but uh, right, 3D Base Camp 2022. All right, uh, 3D Base Camp. And this, okay, here's another thing. Like, this is again, like, market research is exploration, have fun with it. Um, let's do conferences, right? Obviously, I'm already missing this one, um, but like, 3D, 3D Base Camp. You know, I can find the link later. Um, this link, no. link, you know, notes, kind of the same algorithm. I won't go into all of this, but yeah, that's like an emerging thing. You might find you have new tabs, etc. Um, obviously, I, for for instance, my YouTube project where I want to sculpt fantasy environments with someone, and I want to I want to produce that and kind of do the business side of that, and find a sculptor who just wants to be able to sculpt and and is into the idea of like live sculpting along with an author, right? Find someone like that. I'm not gonna wait a year to find someone like that, but if I found like a conference that was in like a month or two or a couple months specifically for like 3D modelers, especially if it's local or who knows what, but um, or virtual or something like that. I could go there and network. So um, that might be a great place. One, to figure out important people. Um, and that is actually, okay, that's something I could do for the uh, uh, for finding people. Look up keynote speakers, speakers at 3D Basecamp, right? Because those are gonna be important people. And so I'm gonna come back look at that to find you know important people that i might not not just find going around the web right so key influencers if they're important enough to get paid to speak at a conference then i i guess sometimes all a lot of times people volunteer to do that for free but i guess the keynote speaker at a conference is usually paid at least but um anyway so so there you go that's like some this is the type of discovery like have fun with it enjoy this process I know for me that market research has been <laughs> sometimes painful, but um, it is fun to discover things if you lean into that. And I think for me, what's painful is just there's just so much, right? Where do I start? Where do I begin? That's where like starting with one keyword, working through the tabs, go back to another keyword, work through the tabs. That makes it manageable enough that it's not stressful and so overwhelming, right? And so... Anyway, what I might do with uh, a social, like with products, I don't, it depends on the space. A VR app products, again, pretty niche. I'm probably not gonna have hundreds of these, but like for social, for example, you really might get dozens uh, of social groups 
that uh, the, across several social networks. But this is just an example. And again, uh, for social, kind of my algorithm is go look up your keyword, uh, then focus, yeah, focus on people or groups, and then check two things. What is the size of their following? Or three things, I guess. What is the size of their following? Is it actually relevant to what you want or just someone who has that random interest and doesn't post on it much or they don't talk about that much? Um, and then, you know, do they have recent content? If they have not produced content in months, then, you know, maybe you want to find something more active unless you're interested historically in, you know, older data rather than, for instance, having conversations or keeping up with new stuff. There may be occasions for that, but generally speaking, you want to make sure they have recent uh, information. So YouTube is a big channel. This is one of the ones that Will It Fly does not uh, talk about. And I didn't have a tab already open for that. But uh, um, yeah, weird features. All right. Um, there's a lot of right wing stuff. There's some sketch comedy. You get to see what's <laughs> randomly recommended side hustles. There is something actually relevant. Star Trek Picard in the bathroom. Man, YouTube is a weird place. I swear I have not been looking up videos on Star Picard in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, that was very distracting. You can see how easy it is to get distracted. I have a um, a video on burnout and distraction, and basically my mantra is it it's not about being undistractable 100% of the time. It's about being able to recover quickly from that. So I'm recovering quickly and not going down the rabbit hole of like weird YouTube recommendations. So. VR 3D modeling. That's, I, I guess that's the other struggle. So the struggle is where do you start with market research? And then the other struggle is like, how do you stay on task? And I admit like, you know, I get distracted too. You have all of this random content thrown at you, but all right, I'm in the zone. I'm looking at 3D modeling. And so again, you have a very similar process where I, you could look up the videos, right? How many videos and how many views? VR sculpting is amazing. My first Oculus Medium character, Sci-Fi Queen Bee. Oculus Medium. Yan sculpts. All right. Well, that's a big video. 6.5 million views two years ago. And that's also something I found is that like, obviously like the Oculus sculpting, there was a big boom in that about a year or two ago. Things have quieted down a little bit. VR headset in the world, 3D modeling, gravity sketch, Oculus Quest, 25K views. So this gives you a sense, like just scrolling down, uh, VR sculpting to 3D prints. Interesting, okay. So 3D printing, again, let's, let's make a note, like uh, uh, may or may not be related to the first item I want, 3D printing. Actually here, let's do that. I guess that's keywords, uh, 3D printing, uh, VR. You know vr 3d printing right so i'm discovering like again that's another use case that i wasn't focused on um and you know didn't pick up immediately all right so um so you can do videos again pretty much what i like to do first is is this is not just the individual videos on the topic that i care about um if i'm going to produce a video that competes with these i might do that but what i might be more interested in is for instance the channels so Yan Sculpts, um, nice Caitlin from Arcane. Oh, fun. So, and the, that's a good marketing technique, right? Like Arcane is relatively recent show. It's wildly popular. And so he's trading on that. And so, right, how to sculpt Echo in one minute. Wow, that's super fast. Okay, I'm gonna definitely have to check that out, right? Because my goal is, um, more environments, but like digital sculpting quickly. And so if he can do it in one minute, I want to know how he's doing that, etc. cetera. Um, sculpting and blender for beginners. So a lot of desktop stuff. All right, there's his video. But anyway, um, so one, you check again, size of it, is the content relevant? Um, you know, it's not as much environments, which is fine but is still definitely still an influencer. And maybe that's a partnership opportunity, right? Maybe if I find someone who's really good at environments and someone who's good at character, we can kind of combine and do like, you know, edit together a video of two live sculptures and then, you know, end up with 
putting the character in the environment. Um, that might be a fun project. Anyway, um, again, yep, market research sparks ideas, whatnot. But this is a good channel, right? Recent content, relevant, has, you know, again, specific like VR sculpting, specifically characters. Um, so I'm going to grab that, that link and do, you know, YouTube yeah, and sculpts. Sculpts, links, uh, their subscribers are 489k. Um, biggest video. So, so yeah, I had this one out here too. And if you look at videos, often it will recommend some of the biggest ones. It's kind of recent too. But if you scroll down, you know, what are some of the biggest videos? It's, you know, usually hundreds of thousands, millions. Why sculptors suck at drawing. Okay, interesting. 1.9 million views. The scientific way to improve your art fast. So it looks like he's tapping into more of like a general art community with some of these, right? But I could grab that. All righty, ads, yay. Um, whoop, back here. So I could do that, right? And I could go forward. Oh, nice. Preview. Um, and then, where is it? Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd probably just have to, like, paste in a series of those. So if I paste it, my goal formatting-wise was... Um, Oh, VR sculpting is amazing. I definitely, that's at 6 million and it's even bigger. So definitely should be in like his top videos, highly relevant. So, but yeah, this is, this is an interesting tip. So this is someone who, I guess it is a, a sculpting learning channel as opposed to entertainment channel. Uh, but you know, the fact that some of their general art about, you know, art challenges things our popular videos, like that is potentially video I ideas for my YouTube channel. So, all right. So yeah, there's some big videos and some are directly related to my space and others a different content idea. Why sculptors suck at drawing, right? But, you know, maybe in my channel, even though I'm very focused on, or the idea I originally came up with was focused on building 3D environments for artists, there probably is a good behind the scenes episode where I just interview the 3D modeler that I'm working with and talk about like art challenges and you know that would get at you draw in the artist crowd and and be kind of a video that might uh catch a new audience for the channel even though it's it's related but it's not quite the you know the the single topic that I have um so it could be a one off video could be another um series so notes and then, you know, here, this is, again, you're going to have a lot of links. So I'm going to, you know, type out something like focuses on character models, models, you know, you know, maybe if I, if I'm not filling this out right now, which I'm not, I'm just giving you examples, maybe search for uh, environment 3D modeling or something like that to find some people who are more specific like that. That's even more niche, right, than uh, character sculpting but at like half a million subscribers that, um, you know, maybe we can afford to go more niche. Maybe there is someone who does beautiful environments. You know, they don't have as many subscribers as Gian Sculpts. But anyway, uh, so yeah, there's some notes. Again, rinse, lather, repeat. So what would I do here? I'd go back to VR modeling. Uh, again, I'm kind of mentioned that you could say Sculptor VR, right? That's a product. Uh, Gravity Sketch, that's a product. Blender um etc tilt brush quill um adobe medium so these are all modeling programs and so like i said this this space is those are heavy keywords for it uh when you look up 3d vr 3d modeling but again sometimes seeing like i hadn't been focusing on quill i think i've heard of it but i could go ahead and add that that you know to products and i'd go ahead and fill this out later right uh, or if I were doing this right now, I would fill that out right now before I forget, but I can leave it for later since I'm just doing a, a sketch. But um, looking at these auto completes is helpful. 
And then normally what I do is just go to the filters and do channels because I focus on that. Um, and so there's VR sketch, uh, 523. And again, you can kind of see that. All right, gravity sketch, bigger. And this also might help me know which ones, like these sound like products. An extension to sketch up. Okay, or that would be probably why. And if there's a sketch up channel, it would probably be bigger. But all right, Gravity Sketch, 15K, VR with Andrew, um, wonderful, creating VR ex experiences with Unity. The, yeah, they're, that's kind of a tangent, but might be related. And so, yeah, picking out some of these bigger channels, making sure they have recent content, et cetera. So um, rinse, leather, repeat, right? And the idea is, um, Especially, I mean, since YouTube has like the monopoly on videos, there are other spaces, right, that you could go, but like YouTube is by far going to have the most traffic. So, um, but it's a single social network. So maybe you fill up with like 10 channels or something like that, um, 10 to 20, whereas your social might have, you know, 20, 40, 60 groups, depending on how many channels you are. Maybe more than you can get into, and that's okay when you're doing the market research. Um, this is when you're doing the market research, you want to generally go fast and I'm stopping to explain things. But like if I were doing this, I would be just like, all right. Um, da, 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 da. OK, gravity sketch. Gravity sketch is a big one. Bam. Gravity sketch. Boom. How many subscribers were there? Fifteen uh, K. 15k product creator channel bam right and i might just do that so normally you're not going to go as slowly as i'm going as i'm explaining my thought process I, I would be knocking those out and then just getting 10 or 20 and you really can get to a place where you can get somewhere between at least like between all these tabs 50 and 100 items in an hour uh, if you're serious about this you probably want to do more than that and again you want to do like you probably spend an hour mostly on on that one keyword filling out all these things and then you want to go back and try other keywords and then later you later after you're done with this process you would sift through like all right well what are the top ones and then maybe you, you either delete the other ones or highlight the ones that are most relevant and then you narrow down but like the purpose of this right now is simply to to get as many of these down so you would be knocking those out just like I did the gravity sketch and then moving on to the next tab um, and then coming back and then filtering. So uh, forums are interesting because they're how people talk about products. So uh, I have, for example, here on Reddit, VR 3D modeling. Um, again, I'm mostly interested, interesting uh, people. All right. Anyway, uh, I hadn't noticed the people tab before, but that might be interesting. But you know, posts do help you kind of get idea of like what people are talking for, so uh, talking about. So it's useful to um, to notice like, all right, what are the top posts? Uh, this user has been deleted. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, VR three D new friendly. VR, a 3D modeling software. All right, so what does this tell us? So it's in our Steam VR. Okay, great. That's a community that we might look for. Uh, it doesn't have a ton of updates. And again, it's two years ago. Like I said, there's like an explosion two years ago. Uh, I think, you know, some of that is petered out, uh, which is good and bad, right? Uh, I'll have less, fewer competitors probably as a lot of people have shut down and it's been a little bit quieter for the last few years. But at the same time, I can't ride the wave of excitement that you know was happening two years ago, um, but anyway. So so here is a topic I could find the community, and so um, what I so usually what I do typically with Reddit, and again maybe I need a separate Reddit tab, uh, you know tab because I have a Reddit one. Actually, that kind of makes more sense, but I'll just do it in my uh, forums right now. So um, this is actually better suited towards Cora. Uh, where it's question, but I'm going to put, you know, the community there. Uh, Steam, Steam VR community, Reddit, write notes, um, post, 
looking for um oh i have to go back noob friendly vr 3d modeling noob friendly vr 3d modeling right um so so i might do actually i'll probably do this separately i'm looking for right and this is where okay I could probably be better organized. My organization has failed me in this case where I'm realizing, uh, okay, there's a 3D modeling group, whatnot. I probably wanna have separate tabs for the individual questions, because this is helpful. Like this is where you can, I while mostly I'm focused on going to different like communities like I just posted, um, friendly. VR 3D modeling. Uh, while I'm mostly focused on communities, it is helpful as you note some of these uh, questions, and then I could type in notes to to find particular questions. So I probably would, if I were doing this again, it's an evolving process. I would probably have questions, and then I have Reddit and Quora, and then maybe I'd. Uh, you know, so I could either just put the Reddit groups in in with social i could do a reddit tab and then do questions that just kind of has big reddit posts or interesting reddit posts and commentary and um and um also quora too so all right so and then again so blender is really easy to pick up and integrate into vr can't go wrong with blender maya both are a pain in the butt to master but not a lot of options out there a uh, deleted person so it's like that's not noob friendly right uh, vr cad compatible software preference would be gravity sketch is pretty nice okay again but the most brain dead 3d modeling tool would be hands down poly brush in tilt brush you click and draw a 3D form just by moving your hand around. You can keep building up little blocks to make 3D figure of any detail amount. Interesting. It would be interesting to see this process. Then you could export the object to any 3D program. As much as I would hate it for everything else, the polygon brush in tilt brush requires absolutely zero knowledge to make something nice. All the other alternatives require learning software over the course of a few days. Bam. So, so there's a, this is why it is helpful. And I like a section just for like questions or posts. Um, so I'm gonna, boom, move that. Um, question, um, link, site, notes. And that's where, yeah, I'd write like, uh, tilt brush VR, you know, from that comment. Uh, Poly tool is simplest. All others like gravity, uh, gravity sketch. And take some time to to learn. All right, so there you go. Um, all right, and so I I do that with a series of questions. Reddit is, again, a great place where you hear people talking in real terms about their products. Uh, I'm not gonna go into it, but Will It Fly, which I guess I'm heavily endorsing with this particular market research project, um, there are some tri uh, tricks and tips that Pat Flynn has looking for certain keywords. Um, so like, have you tried or something like that, where for instance, if you're in a community, you might search within that community, have you tried? And then that would give you a list of people who are talking about products and that would bring up some of these natural conversations around different you know, products. So he has a few different of those good ideas. So um, that is a one way to look and with Reddit, it's a combination. There are questions and there are posts. Quora is also a good place, VR 3D modeling. And there's different ways you can, uh, different things you can look for. You can look for um, spaces. Didn't find any results. Uh, again, that's pretty niche. Uh, are there profiles? 
All right. Um, sometimes you can find that, but you do find questions like, will VR sculpting kill traditional 3D modeling? Wow, that is a big question for um, for my channel, especially for the app idea potentially, then I could, um, that would be, that would be helpful. So you have some people saying like, yes, it will. And they'll be talking about the things it could do to replace VR modeling that might be helpful to know if I was designing a 3D modeling app, environment app, for example. Um, and there are people who are saying, no, it can't. And they'll be cause it, uh, Quora Plus to answer this, to access this answer. Whoa, that's new. All right, that is unfortunate. Wow. Um, that's, I guess they're having a hard time modifying, modifying that, uh, or they're monetizing their product, right? So uh, it used to be just ad supported, but now they have a plus product. All right, so no, not anytime soon, but yeah, I hope VR sculpting will be mass adopted by 10 years from now to early technology. Today, technology is capable and we have some very good tools, but I guess still a decade. Long way to go for it to be mainstream or job traditional 3D modeling killing. All right, well, I, that was not helpful. All right, I would say no, at least in actual form, spinning characters on screen with a mouse is faster and less exhausting than flapping hands in the air and you don't have a headache after a while. So I already knew about the headache limitation, right? But actually, yeah, what he's talking about is like the spinning the character and the moving is faster and less exhausting. So that would be something, for instance, that I would have to think about if I was creating a VR modeling app. Now, you know, I think there are, um, there are answers to that potentially. For example, that, um, it might be quicker to do movements with your mouse. And maybe I guess if you get really good at the mouse movements and the 2D screen and blah, 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 um, you might have a better sense of those, but especially for people who are new, having a sense of space, uh, who, who don't really like, for people who are new, who don't know how something translates to the screen, right? Who aren't, who aren't pros, they might prefer a VR setting, even if it is more tiring, if it's more intuitive. So, um, I, I think there's a potential balance there, but that is an important piece of feedback. And this is exactly why you find these sorts of questions, right? Uh, uh, 3D modeling replace traditional. And then Quora. All right. Um, mm. Right. So, um, you know, so those are the, the types of things like where you're learning this world a lot more in depth from people who talk about it. But the reason also, I mean, that's kind of similar to what I was doing with a post on Reddit. But the reason I wanted to highlight Quora is much like Google, they have these up. Ah, there we go. Uh, similar questions, related questions. So like, how can you do 3D modeling in VR? Bam. That's a great one. What's the difference between creating 3D models in VR versus desktop desktop apps, right? Bam, so like you can actually click into one of these. Um, if you find that there's spaces or particular people who like answer the, the most popular answers, those are people you can use to populate your people tab. Um, and anyway, so that, that's a pretty powerful tool. Uh, I love that this works pretty well. They have got like a really good AI engine for like similar questions. So you can easily fill out lots of questions and get lots of interesting feedback quickly on Quora with the related questions. So, all right. Will VR sculpting kill? Oh, that's the traditional one. All right. So the other tip, and this does come from Will It Fly, is you can search specifically, if you want to search for forum, you can search for forum colon. You can also search for blog colon, uh, VR 3D modeling to try and find blog and so let's see we have again like watch out for ads um and then here's a related question is 3d modeling easier in vr scarred ghost or scared ghost anyway um 
So here's learn by bringing complex 3D models into frame. Frame blog, frame immersive web remote and other stuff want to contribute. Troubleshooting frame. So this is like a a site related to the metaverse. I'm not really focused on the metaverse, but again, this is exploratory. This is not um, a part where I'm reducing things. So I might, you know, say uh, frame, frame blog, and then link that. Oh, oh yeah, how many views did they get on their site? Um, boop. So, number of words. Monthly traffic in the United States, 105. So it's actually pretty small. I, uh, you know, maybe I'm, all right, scared ghost has come up a few times. Masterpiece VR CEO 3 modeling in VR is 10 times faster. Okay, cool blog. I'm gonna capture that. And, you know, ghost. Um, they have a lot more views. Again, this is like, I think from Surfer or something like that, right? It's 3,000 or 3,494. 94, all right. COVR arguing 3D modeling is faster in VR. All right, so clearly there's gonna be bias, right? But I wanna get all those perspectives, the advocates as well as the, the detractors. I wanna kind of learn all of the space. Um, and then I go to find, and then it's not just the article though. Often, if I find a cool article, I will link to that or throw that in the notes. Um, but it is it is a blog, so um, I can find others. Uh, another cool uh, tip or trick for for this, is uh let's see best you can just do best so blog screens for specifically blogs um best vr 3d modeling blog and so you might seven best tools for painting 3d models where to get top quality models Import apps, blog we design virtual daydream. All right, so again, kind of uh, VR is a smaller niche, partially because if you it's expensive and doing it for like more than an hour can make you queasy, right? So it, it is a smaller niche, and that means that I'm not seeing some of the things that I was expecting to, see, or I might expect to see in with another product. So if I'm looking for, um, you know, entrepreneur related stuff, I will find lots of blogs. Um, and I will find articles saying, here are the best entrepreneur blogs, here are the best entrepreneur podcasts. And it's probably another section that I should do, podcasts, boop. Um, and unfortunately, and there might be better tools, and this is where I am not as good at searching the podcast. Um, VR 3D modeling. Um, I think iTunes has more ratings, whereas like if you're looking at Google Podcast, um, there's episode results. Um, sometimes you might see channel results or whatnot. Um, looks like there's some spicy content here. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, VR Hermits, okay. Bam, that's probably an interesting channel. Do they have recent episodes? No, they don't. All right. Um, it's Unfortunately, you have like fewer like follows and ratings often when you're dealing with podcasts and you just kind of have to trust Google's ranking algorithms again, you know, or you might look for other directories that have those features, but it's pretty much a similar algorithm for podcasts where you look for podcasts that are up to date. Again, uh, in this space, if you're just trying to learn about who's who, uh, it might be okay if a podcast has, you know, not been around for a few years, you might still get them covering some of the pioneers in the field and that will be for people, right? Um, 
and then you know put those down um this is going on an hour it's just really long a little bit longer than i thought explaining the thought process takes a long time normally i probably would have just had like mm, 50 to 70 results within an hour if i'd just been jamming on the keyword uh and you know going from one to the next rather than explaining things but i will i will kind of wind this down a little bit now since it's running long uh, I've already shown several examples of how you might find people actually looking at speakers at conferences will surface that as well as like YouTube, social, um, other places, you'll you'll kind of start to come across big channels or big names more and you'll start adding them more as um, as people potentially to network with and then right, you might have things like conferences. So I hope this shows you one that like the, there isn't a perfect set of tabs at the bottom, you're going to, uh, some things will be less applicable. Maybe there's less VR sculpting blogs, obviously, because it's a very visual medium. So most people go YouTube and don't, or there might be less VR sculpting podcasts, but there might be more on YouTube since it's such a visual medium, etc. So like the tabs that are actually helpful for you are going to depend, but at least think of it in terms of products, social, YouTube, um, questions, blogs, podcasts, and people will get you, and potentially conferences, I guess, will get you a quite a big and thorough understanding of what kind of media is out there. Uh, products could include books and knowledge products if you want a separate tab for them, depending on like, for instance, if your market research is books, right? Then you might have a, you know, your product tab might be books or who knows what, or it might be, you know, apps related to writing novels or who knows other sites, whatever. So, and if you're, but if you're, yeah, in a book space, that might be a separate tag tab. You might have like writing apps and then you might have like big books in the space, for example. So, uh, be flexible with it, discover it, enjoy. I hope this has been helpful and, um, good luck in your own market research. Hi, this is future Alec documenting my market research process took longer than I thought it might. So I'm breaking it into two parts. So part one is uh, me setting up my initial spreadsheet and giving specific examples on specific sites of what types of content I'm looking for. Part two, subscribes to make sure you get part two, it's coming out in a week. Uh, part two will be the end of the process. What my spreadsheet looks like when I'm quote unquote done. What does it mean to be done? Uh, because I don't think market research is ever done but there's good enough and how to move on to the next phase. So we'll talk about that as well as the specific insights I got from my particular market research.